Welcome to part two of this practice. So we're going to be on the floor now. You might want to have a blanket or some extra padding for your knees. You're going to come to all fours. We're going to inhale, take the gaze forward with a slight tilt of the tailbone. And then exhale, we're going to bend at the elbows. You might need to slide your elbows back. The head will come almost to your, your mat or your blanket or your floor space. Then we'll inhale and we'll come back up and we'll exhale and we'll come back into this shape. So it's not a full child's pose, it's just a shape like we're bending into it. Now, there are options here. You might want to inhale and then press your hips up and back into down dog. Doing that variation, then you would inhale, come back to the knees, and maybe alternate with the child's pose. You could also come to plank pose, and you might need to adjust your hands or your toes, plank pose, and then find down dog by lifting the hips. And then coming to knees, and then back to towards the child's pose. So again, I'm encouraging you to play around and find variations that serve you. What do you need today? What's your body asking you for? Where does your breath feel free and where does your breath feel maybe constricted? Finding two more variations, whatever feels most supportive to you. And then if you are looking for, in this moment you need more energy, I would say find a down dog, pause there, keep breathing, stay in the pose. If you're looking for more rest at this point, I would say pause in your child's pose. If you still have those blocks nearby, you could use a block on your forehead Sometimes a block on the forehead feels really nice. And you can even roll your forehead from side to side. Just kind of connecting with that place in the center of your forehead. Sometimes also referred to as our third eye, that seat of intuition. So allow your eyes to close there. And if you're not using a block, maybe you can use your fists. So just stack one fist on top of the other. And if you're still in down dog, how does that feel in your shoulders? Can you widen your shoulders? So get really broad through your shoulders. And then if you're in down dog, please lower your knees. Sit on your heels just for a moment. How did that feel for you? So again, using these practices as a way to just check in with yourself and see how you're feeling. Maybe you did all down dog plank. Maybe you did all child's pose. It's up to you, it's your practice. I'm just giving you variations. Now making your way onto your back. So knees are bent, feet are on the floor. Allow yourself to come down onto your back. And align yourself for bridge pose. And again, I would suggest if you have a block, it's a great prop to use for many poses. So for bridge pose, you would just put it between your thighs. And then this, when you come up into bridge pose, is a great way you can't cheat. <laughs> you cannot cheat when you have a block between your legs. So press into your hands, lift your hips up, press into your heels, squeeze the block. If you don't have a block, then imagine you have a block. So squeeze the imaginary block. Breathing here, so we're holding in this pose. We're not holding our breath. So again, creating that challenge, allowing yourself to feel that heat and that challenge. That will help build that window of tolerance. We're using the body as a resource to build our resilience. And when you're ready, slowly exhale your way out of the pose. 
From here, take one knee and then the other knee, not all the way in. Allow the arms to stay straight here. This will feel nice, hopefully, for the low back. Inhale here, and when you're ready to exhale, then allow the elbows to bend. Allow the knees to come closer towards your chest. When you inhale, extend, straighten the arms. Exhale, bend the arms, take the knees into the chest. Do that a couple times. When you're ready, release one and then the other. And then separate your feet. So if you are working with a mat, they're gonna be about mat, mat width is where your feet will be. And then we're gonna um, rotate both of our knees over to one side. Now, if you have sciatica, you would not wanna go very far in this, or maybe you don't do this pose at all, um, but just listening very intently to your body so when you start to take these knees over to one side, they don't have to end anywhere. So we're just allowing them to fold so that we can start to feel the opening across our legs. We worked our legs pretty strongly in those standing poses. So it's nice to give them this end um, relaxation stretch, if you will, but we're reaching. So with yoga it's less about stretching and it's more about reaching and connecting connecting with breath we're doing top down and bottom up so we're listening as much as we are sensing in we're listening for those messages and we're listening to the sound of our breath so going back and forth when you're ready to inhale then allow the knees to come towards the center and when you're ready to exhale allow the knees to come to the other side so i may be going too slow for your breath or i may be going too fast for your breath at this point but we're in connection because this practice brings us together i'm giving you suggestions of sensations but hopefully you're listening to the sensations that you're noticing in your practice. When you're ready, bring both knees to center. Walk your feet in slightly. Take both knees again into your chest. And now take your right ankle and place it over the left uh, thigh just in front of the knee. So we're coming into this four square type of shape Then we'll flex this right foot. So flexing that foot helps just give some more protection to this knee and even sometimes with your hand massaging that The knee joint likes a circular motion. So this is nice um, self massage right here and then you can stay here if you like you can place your hands underneath this left thigh you can stay there you can also start to do a little bit of rocking on the low back again if there's no back issues so um, if you do have any back issues you may just want to leave the rocking part out and find a quiet place to rest here when you're ready release and then maybe you give this this right thigh a little squeeze and then stretch it out. So let it go long. Feel that length. And then drag that heel back in. We'll bring both knees into the chest again. And then we'll switch taking the left ankle just on top of the right thigh. This right here might be enough. Now remember, two sides, so they could feel completely different. And then the variations are you flex into this left foot, which is the top foot, you would flex into that. You could do the little um, hand um, circles on this left knee. Staying here or maybe threading through. So placing the left hand through that four square shape and then the right hand clasps on the outside. I like to clasp underneath the shin. Some people will clasp on top of the shin. That's just a personal preference. 
depends on how your hips are feeling. And then again, if you like, you can rock from side to side. But of course, if you have back issues, this may not feel like something appropriate for you. So please listen to your body. Tune into your breath again. If you were rocking, bring that to stillness. Release. So release the uh, right foot down. Give this left thigh a squeeze, either a shin or underneath the thigh. Give it a squeeze in and then release it long. Now, if you like, you can release both legs long, extend your arms overhead and take up as much space as you can. Imagine that you can touch the wall with your toes and with your fingertips. So get really long here. Breathe in and exhale. And now taking your arms into cactus or into a T position, just roll your head from side to side. Notice how that feels, so rolling from side to side. One side might feel more tense than the other, but it doesn't matter here. We're just wringing it out a little bit, giving ourselves some time to connect. Now, if you have time to stay in this relaxation pose, I invite you to do that. The deep rest is another one of our practices that helps us um, build the resilience. So sometimes we need just two minutes of deep, uninterrupted rest. If you are not so fortunate to have that opportunity right now in this moment, at this point then you would drag your heels, placing your feet flat underneath you. You're still going to take a slow pace so you're still going to do this in a way as if you had all the time in the world there's no rush you're gonna roll to your right side and then use your bottom arm as a pillow for your head and just curl up on your right side take your time and you'll take your left hand as a brace you'll extend the top leg You'll press yourself up. Allow your head to come up last. Take all the time you need here. And when you come up to seated, again, take a moment to pause here. Give yourself that opportunity to coordinate with everything you just did. That's the therapeutic benefit. We're not just rushing from thing to thing to thing, but we actually take a moment to integrate the practice into our life. And so whatever you're feeling now, that's, that's the gen, genuine person that you are. Now you can bring that person into whatever's next for you. So thank you for practicing with me. Be well.